different meaning. Your plea is not mine. Your understanding is not mine. But he understands your plea while you're pleading your case. So Joshua continued to warn Israel, to continue, sorry, that you must, by all means, follow the precepts, statutes, and the commandments of Yah. Reason was because he saw how they acted in the wilderness. He still saw how they act even after he was, even, uh, how they were still acting, and he's just now in full control. See, because when you control a group of people, you got to have them to remember all the words of the law. And when you get to that place that you thought you knew everything, or you think you know everything, Yahweh always have someone in front of you. I will bless who I will. Many are called, few are chosen. Joshua was the right choice. You made the right decision and chose to serve a true and a mighty God. I believe that's why we're here, to understand the story. Now, to complete the whole story, I want you to bring two words to your remembrance, all while we're talking, all we're speaking. First word, fear. Fear. Got this on the internet, or on the computer, not the internet. <laughs> Can't get that, this on the internet. Fear, a profound reverence and awe, especially toward God. Whew. That's powerful all by itself. Again, I repeat, a profound reverence. See, when we get in that real place to bring it home, when we really begin to fear God and all his handiworks, just look at the news all week long. Look at all the news before that. When we have that reverence and when we have that fear of God, we begin to come out of self, begin to pray a prayer of faith, believe it, because we say we are the faithful. In other words, you're saying, because I believe we're talking to believe it, you're full of faith. You believe who he really is. And since you're full of the faith that he is, he can and he will do exceedingly, abundantly. We're going to repeat this a lot. More than you can ever think or act. Because my faith is in him. My faith is because his word said it. My faith is what I believe in what his word has said. That's my faith. Your faith is in his word. And when my, my, I get myself in the faith of his word, I began to hear what he's saying to my spirit. Because at that moment when self get in the way, the reverence, the fear of God come upon you. It's because you get in that moment. That's a jerk moment, I call it. Is that you? Yes. That's me. I'm trying to get your attention. Because you, 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 your understanding, are you coming to the real understanding? That's what this word is talking about. I want you to reverence me. Do we really, ask yourself, you need to raise your hand. Do I really reverence what he says to me according to his word? That's what Joshua was trying to get Israel to understand before he died. Don't go back to, don't go back to the word. Commit. I didn't say commitment, but it should be a commitment. Commit to obligate or pledge one self. See, Marine, and I, I love talking about them because they're a 
because you know about United States Marine. That is a committed bunch of young men and uh, women. They don't just join up, they commit. What they mean by that, I don't want you to, to join, but I want you to commit to the service, your service in the United States Marine. What they're really saying, I want all of you. I want your undivided attention. Every part of you, from the hair on top of your head to the sole of your feet, belongs to the United States Marine Corps. And when you see a young man or young woman fully dressed and clothed in the United States, in a marine uniform, that is, I've been in the army, a committed person. They have a cl complete, clear focus of what they're there for. They are committed to fight for the love of their country. And most of all, you might not believe it, for the love of God. That's commitment. Ask yourself, am I committed to follow the word of the Lord? Let's go back to the word. Amen. Now that we got there, Joshua 24th chapter, beginning again at the 14th verse. Now, therefore, fear Yahweh. Serve him in sincerity, in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt, serve ye Yahweh. Now, here's a question. Are you willing to cross over to the other side. That's a question. Are you really willing to cross over to the other side? I'm reminded of a message that uh, Elder Pope, Zelda Pope spoke. It was called On the Other Side of Pain. Okay? Which, which, it took me there for a moment and, because there. The other side of your pain, you found there was trials, temptation, whatever you want to call it. And you were so glad. You were so glad that you, you entered into a place, wherever that place was, whether it was in your bedroom, whether it was in your car, whether it was in your closet, whether it was in the house of God. When you went in that real place, say, I got to cross over to the other side. Because on this side is nothing but pain, but sorrow, but, but fears. But when I understood that God brought me out of my Egypt, whatever your Egypt is, and whatever your pharaohs that was holding you back, after you got me through all of my plagues, you might have ten or more plagues in your life right now that has to come out of you. In order for you to really commit yourself to Yah. So Joshua reminded Israel. I'm reminding the people of God this morning. Who are you going to serve? And that verse say, for me and my house. See what Joshua really was saying for, when he said it. For me and my house. Y'all don't get it. For me and For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. This is the temple of God right here. You need to understand that. So we look at it and say, oh, yeah, because me and my house, in my, in my home is all over the place. For me and my house, I mean that spiritually, and I do mean it naturally. And I mean it right now. We will serve Yahweh. We should have no other gods before us. 
Because I understand when God is for you, who can be against you? A cordial word. He said in his word, I will, not I might, I will supply your every need. Because I already know what you want. Because what you want ain't necessary good for you at the moment. That's why I won't bless you. That's why I won't give it to you. Because you're not ready for it. You were not willing to give me what I want right now. I've covered you. I'm still covering you. 91st song said, I got you under my wings. I got you covered, but you still can't see it. Reason why you're looking out there. You're looking over next to you in your neighbor's driveway. Or you may be peeping through your neighbor's window. Seeing what they possess. What they got. You may be over there trying to get what I got. You don't know how I got it. So what I'm saying to you, the word of God is saying to in my spirit right now, because Joshua was trying to say to them in the 15th verse, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day. He told he already said. Choose you this day whom we will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But for me in my house, you'll serve the Lord. So what you're caught up in a bad neighborhood? So much you caught up in our work. So what? So what? You're caught up in the project. So what? So what? God said, I give it, what is it? and I'll take it away from you. He said to Israel, I'll feed you because you're complaining. Man of God already told you, you just march on. Same story now. And follow simple directions. And you'll see the hand of God. Every time, Israel, every time you, Israel, get into this situation, I promise you, if you're faithful, I promise you, if you're praying, I promise you if you're committing yourself for God, I promise you if you fear him, you will always see the hand of God on your life. He's that kind of God. But because he understands your very nature, my very nature, I don't want nobody to think I'm talking about you. I'm talking, when I'm talking, I'm talking about me. It starts here first. Okay? It starts here first. Then it gets out there. You haven't gone through nothing yet. Hallelujah. Yet you're complaining. Complacent. Still got a mind of your own. But in Joshua's command, he had to remind them, renew their thinking. What did the Bible say? By the renewing of your what? Mind. <laughs> Creating me a what? Clean heart. The right type of what? Spirit. Within who? Me. Why you say all that? So that you can get to the place that you need to be. Because you know there's some dirty laundry. But we want, him to, we want it all from him. And as soon, even with your dirty laundry, you still see his hand. Why you see his hand? Because he, what I just said a while ago, because he what? Cares for you. Because you're in his care. Because number one, two, three, and so forth, you are already predestined to do what he wants to do. The choice is up to you. 
So you have to renew your choice. Will I serve the gods on the other side? Of the flood? Or I'm crossing over? Some of us got to make that decision. I'm crossing over to the other side of my pain. I like that. Because none of you, nobody likes pain, do they? Nobody likes going through. But Joshua remind him, that's what happened to your forefathers. That's why all that pain is still, still there. You're still trying to do some of the same thing that you did back then. You think you're so sneaky. You're so slick. You're so sly. Nobody knows. Somebody knows. Amen. He knows. There's an old saying, you know, you can fool the people some of the time, but you can't fool them all the time. In fact, you can't even fool them no more. Mm-hmm. So you ask yourself, I need to cross over to the other side. You need to. Renewing your what? The right choice. Renewing your Right choice. That's what Joshua said to them. He meant what he said. And this is what all of us do. 16 verse. And the people answered and said, Elohim forbid that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other God. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Go to Deuteronomy. What? 30th chapter, 19 and 21st. See, we can't get away from the word of God. And this is what he was saying while you're getting there. Because I must in spirit. In the 19th verse of the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy, it says, I call heaven and earth. To record this day against you. That I have set before you, you life and death. Blessings and cursing. Therefore choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. 21st. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And thou mayest obey his voice, and thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. And the length of thy days. Thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy father, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. There it is. It's a promise. But you got to cross over to the other side. You got to renew your choices. What choice? Ask yourself. What choices am I truly making? You won't have to go through all the things that you go through in this life. Provided you make the right choices. I think at certain moments, certain instances of our life, we made the right choice. But, but there's that one moment. That's when the enemy slip in unaware because it come in at you all kind of ways. Let you really truly be serving God, Yahweh, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, going on, running for Jesus a long time, and I ain't tired yet. And all of a sudden, your bank account been deleted. Who are you going to serve now? Mm. Think about it. I come in, I get up Monday morning, and I'm running to the bank to cash my check. Sorry, Mr. Pope. You ain't got no money in your account. What, what you mean you ain't got no money in my account? And then you know what? Most of all, we start doing lipping off, right? Yes, we do. Hiding. We, we, we get a look. Let me take my coat off for a few minutes.
take my coat off. Because I'm about to do something different than I normally do. And I'm not trying to say all those words, okay? So I ain't going to lay my religion down. But I'm going to put it over here for a few minutes. Hallelujah. And if we're not prayed up. And you don't have the reverence for God in your life. Woo! So we have to remember what got us to the place we, we got. We know all that stuff we went through. We know all the people we prophesied to. We know all the people we talked to and uh, we paid and we loaned them money and all that other stuff too. And I'm doing really good by now. But my money gone? Something wrong with that picture. I know that's right. Whew. And we ain't saying, Lord, help me at this moment either. So when we know what we, that the help that we truly need from him, it will come. Reason, it will come. Because we understand the fear of God. That's why Israel missed out. All those years. That's why we miss out all those years. All the promises of what God has really has put in your life. You couldn't see it. Because you was at a point, it's all good. But the moment, life just disappeared in front of you. Because your bank account disappeared in front of you. You lost it all. You lost everything you ever thought about. Yeah. And what he was saying. You lost everything the son came and died for. For that one moment. This is what Joshua was trying to say to the people. Don't ever lose that moment, church. It, it, it will come. Trust me. It will come. Perhaps it come on the number of you. It will come. Unexpected circumstances will come. But Joshua said... Remember what happened over there. Remember what they went through. Because now with the younger, now with the younger generation, I myself, gray-headed, I seen what my grandmama and them done. A lot of you don't know what slavery is all about. I do. I seen it. I lived it. Drop head. Couldn't look up. Do it their way or no way at all. I've seen it. You haven't seen that. But what it was explained to you by your grandmama, your uncles, your aunt, child, children, you don't want to go through what we're going through. We had it hard, but we made it. They made it because they believed. There's a song, and I ain't going to sing they. Let's go back to the good old ways. Let's go back on our knees and pray. The reason why they sung that, because they had to remember, I got to go back to the river. See, the Negro slaves had to go down to the river. Okay? This for real. This ain't no. And they went down the river. Y'all, they, were, they, were, they were singing songs and hymns. What? They, all they were doing was praying to, the, to, to God. And so the, the master couldn't understand what they were talking about. Why are them Negroes having such a good time down there? Sing like they do. I won't study, won't no more. <laughs> See? We don't, say, we don't know that stuff like that. So your grandmama and your great-grandmama and your mama now trying to tell you, child, you don't want to go through that. Because the Lord has showed me a new and a better way. Joshua said, now that we live a new and a better way, now 
choose you this day who you're going to serve. Let's go back, on, back to the word. 18 verse. And the Lord drove, drove them from all. Hallelujah. And the Lord drove them out from before all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a what? Holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions, nor your sins. 21st, if you forsake the Lord, hear me, if you forsake the Lord, serve strange God, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he had done you good. Oh, but he's a good God. Yes, he is. Lord, have mercy. I don't know what a lot of you know what atone really means. Atone meant really means. But it come down to the real nitty gritty. Because when I get there and I start atoning before him, I'm trying to cover it all. And when I do that, when I come out, after I'm delivered, Woo! Praise God. That's what we are talking for. That stuff inside of you. You'll get your promise. You'll get it. He said he would do it to you. And all of that, even before Joshua died, he said, see, the, I want you to see the promises of God. Look what I have divided to you. Look what happened to those servants who tried to undermine all the things that y'all have provided for them. Because there are some of us still slipping idols. Can't see it. Under the rug. You're looking there now. You're looking that one. But you can't see what's under there, can you? But guess who do? He does. You got to stop hiding that stuff. Get, you can't hide. Don't think you that smart. Don't think you that deep. That he don't know what's under, what's under there. He knows what's under there. It ain't empty. There's a lot of stuff up in there. Because right up under that camp, there's still air. Pick it up, you can almost feel the suction. I'm saying what real. So know what's sucking you up. Know what you have swept on the carpet. Joshua will remind me. Israel. This is what this story is all about. To renew. And what I'm saying to you church. You need to renew. Your choices. It's a real choice. So I'm saying. In a real way. And I'm really about to close. The point is. We get in a place that we are complacent. If you don't understand what complacent means, I'm all right now. Lord, if it be thy will. Know my heart desire. This is some of it. Yeah, he know. Yes, he said. Yeah, he know. But do you know? Why are you still sitting in that one spot? When you gonna get up and move about? Southwest of, about, about the country. When you going to take that flight? Hallelujah. And go to Hawaii. When you going to take that flight? 
to go to New York. Because sitting here, it's not going to get me on the airline. Because I didn't come from complacent. I'm just still in one place. Looking up and ain't doing nothing. That's what we do. Stand if you will. So I don't know what your vision according to the word we all have visions. I know the majority of we, we look at the vision of our leaders. I look, you know, I myself can say that. I, when God gave you a vision, there's much work in to fulfill the vision. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of headaches. There's a lot of ups. There's a lot of down. There's a lot of things that church you have to willing be willing to go through because you're not willing to give up your paycheck for the building fund. I just said something common. You're not willing to give up a good three hours in service to hear word of the Lord. I didn't say you. I'm just you, you as, as a whole. We as a whole. I was reading in a survey and it's sort of kind of pathetic really. I said, be sure if you really want to get their attention give them 30 minutes worth of hype. Did y'all hear what I said? If you really want the attention, give you 30 minutes worth of hype. But if you give them 30 minutes or more, some word, you just lost your crowd. That's why I thought it was pathetic. We can't sit attentively here. It don't apply to you, you don't holler out. Okay. And here, sound doctrine sound word by the word I was saying to someone I don't ever put myself in anything and I promise y'all I'm not going to say I did this I did that I, I, I it's not about me his word said to Pastor John Anthony Pope if you be willing if you be obedient I'll give you all not some desires of your heart question are you really willing <laughs> it's a real it's, it's real so when and I, I learned this coming up in ministry Sometimes we have to slow down. I've, I've, I've read this many, 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 many times. I've heard it preached different ways. And I said, I just want to do it, what you say do. But I found out in speaking, and I, I really got that, that uh, from apostle, really. Sometimes we have to give you a real overview to bring you back, you know. You know, we said, you must have the Holy Ghost. You gotta have the Holy Ghost. Okay, yeah. Said that so the spirit will bring what back to your remembrance. But then again, I had to go beyond that. I had to go say, but Paul, uh, Apostle Paul told him in Timothy, you gotta do some reading, you gotta do some studying, you gotta do some praying, you gotta stay before God. That's for you. If it's uh, for you, it's for me too. To hear from him. Somebody says, Well, Bishop, how do I hear from him? Let me have all of y'all. King James Version. The Word. Because I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Summon that new translation. <coughs> translation. <coughs> translation. You better watch. Summon that amplified word. Because it amplifies 
It's just some, some, some of our lacking. Try it and read it. No, don't, don't. I, no, I, won't, I, won't, I won't challenge you to do that. Because we like things when an example of when it's, yeah, yeah. But what does he say? How do I find what he said? The first thing I say to you now, I'm going to pray. Pray. Just as simple. Is this you? Thank you. Start reading. See how simple that? But we want to get all deep. And all profound. He don't need that. He just needs you. That's the final wording. Renewal of right choices. Think about it. Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh. I yellow him. Had a night. Only you know. The desires of the hearts of the people. Right here, right now, I pray over them. Pray for them. I pray for their circumstances. I pray for the healing. Your word said heal them for they shall be healed. Save them for they shall be saved. You are our praise. We praise your holy and righteous name. And we come as a servant of the most high God. I'm before you, we submit our will to you. I pray that your will is being done in this place, in every heart, in every mind, and every soul. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, my prayer. Amen.